Hey everyone, and welcome back to No Holds Barred. Today, we're not talking about makeup. We're not talking about electronics. Not really about relevant things. From the title, you can tell, this is a serious discussion. I have been wanting to make this video for a while now. Ever since Dr. Mike put out the video where he's talking with one of his friends who has Tourette's and she was talking about you know, her school experience and I was like, man, I need to share mine. And uh, I'll link that video below from Dr. Mike, but it's been a while and I just never got around to filming this because I got sick. I caught a really bad cold and at the exact same time I triggered my autoimmune disorder in my esophagus and I almost died. Like I'm not being dramatic, it actually moved my esophagus to a different part like in my chest and it, it was scary but I made it through and then got the stomach flu a few weeks later. So I'm here, we're good feeling better but I still think it's important to put things out there mostly because I am talking about my mom in this one and I know for those of you who do follow Instagram this is not a shit on my mom video at all it's actually the complete opposite I'm gonna tell you the good thing she does because if you follow my Instagram I tend to be mad and lash out at her a lot because right now we're not talking and we're not talking because there's issues on both sides, but mostly on her end, the controlling that she's always done towards my life that turns into abuse, that turns into some kind of emotional, financial, whatever abuse. I am now realizing that it comes from a place of love and caring. It doesn't change the fact that it's there. Um, but for a reason or another, she's just not at a place right now where she can admit that. And Part of this video is, I mean, telling the truth, telling all the shit that that woman went through in order to help me get where I am today. Because I often say it. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the things my mom has done for me. And unfortunately, she's stuck in something. And maybe other people who watch this also are stuck in that repetitive thing where all you hear from me is negative stuff. But I say positive. I say it all the time. And I just want to reinforce it again today because it's important. The school system is fucked up. It's not there to help people that need the help. It, everybody's just falling through the cracks. I mean, I don't care about the no kid left behind. Everybody's getting left behind right now. But I do want to talk about my experiences as a child going through school with undiagnosed whatever. We now know as an adult that I have borderline personality disorder. And then I have high-functioning autism and a really bad anxiety disorder. Now, borderline personality comes from childhood trauma. So, there were some things in the house that were traumas. But a lot of my traumas were from the experience I'm going to tell you now. From going to school. From the fact that my father's a professional wrestler. And he was on TV all the time. And, you know, everybody got to watch him on TV. And I didn't really have that much of a relationship with my real dad. Sorry. But, but, we're not here to talk about all that stuff. We're here to talk about the good things she did, how hard it was, all the things that parents go through when they try to get their kid help and get all these doors slammed in their face. So, I'm gonna tell y'all now, this isn't gonna be short. So, sit down. Get a cup of coffee, or roll a blunt. Whatever it is you need to do to calm down a little bit. Because when I get through some of the stories, some of the things that I've been told the past few years as an adult, now that I'm old enough to know the things that she went through, all the things she tried, like, it's just insane. It's probably going to piss you off. Mostly if you're a parent of a child who is struggling to fit in or struggling to get help at school, or you just have a loved one that is, or you're just a person who cares about other people. Some of this is probably going to piss you off. Because it pisses me off. And this is where I want my mom to know that even though I don't get along right now, things are on the best of terms, I more than appreciate everything she's done. Because any one of like the 17 stories I'm going to tell you, she could have given up and said, you know what, they just slammed that door in my face. I got no more options. I can't do shit. And that woman picked herself up and kept going. So that's why I say that the controlling and the emotional abuse, whatnot, 
comes from a place of love. It doesn't come from her wanting to purposely hurt me. That was some hard fucking shit you went through and y'all gonna hear about it. And in my personal life, I have just realized that I'm actually also doing some of those behaviors towards some of my friends and some friendships and whatnot. And I'm terribly sorry. I, there's nothing I can do about it. It's in the past. Some of those friendships are gone. There's nothing I can do to fix it. Some other people, other friendships are a little bit more understanding because there's a difference between my mom and I. I am at a place where I can admit I've done wrong. I can admit that our relationship between her and I, I'm part of the problem. It's not all her. I mean, she has a big thing, she, whatever. But I can admit that I'm part of the problem. And I can admit that some of the behaviors that I've put some of my friends through were things that I learned from her and they just aren't right. So I'm taking that. I'm going back to like mental health because I'm lucky to still have someone that helps me there. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to be a better person. That doesn't mean that my mom isn't a good person because she isn't going to get help for her things. She just can't right now. And maybe once you hear everything I have to say, you might understand. And you might come back and tell me like, yo, lay off your mom. You're being a bitch. And if you wanna leave that in the comments, go for it. So go ahead, give this a thumbs up, leave some comments there. These thumbs ups and these comments are towards my mom and all the other moms and dads out there that are struggling and trying and being so frustrated to try to help their kid so that we can all support each other. And I mean, I'm not gonna change the world, but if I can open a dialogue, that'd be great. That's all I'm looking for. And by the way, I am in New Brunswick, Canada. If that matters any, I don't know. I don't know what the experiences are in other parts of the country and other parts of the world, but this is my story. This is what I went through, what my mom went through as an undiagnosed, mentally ill, high functioning autistic kid. So, here we go. Hmm. Where do I start? Well, I'm gonna start around 1986, because I do remember, and from the stories that I've been told from my family members, I was about four, when my mom realized that I wasn't like all the other kids. Now, I'm not saying that I wasn't like all the other kids, because whatever. I didn't play with toys the same way that other kids did. I was four and I could read. Whatever. I could. And that's actually going to be part of something later. I just loved learning. I would put puzzles together and I mean I went to daycare because my mom was a single mom working and you know she'd pick me up from daycare and the daycare workers would be like um she just keeps playing with this puzzle all the time and like the eight-year-olds that come here can't solve this puzzle and your, your kid can't. So one, she knew that I thought differently, but I also acted differently. Now to tell you what exactly I did to act differently than other kids other than I, I played with things differently, I don't know, I haven't really asked. But if anybody, there's a mom or a dad, I think you know what I mean when you get that feeling that you know your kid is on the same wavelength as all the other kids, I'm guessing, I don't know. But she just knew I was different. She knew that school was gonna be starting because when I went to kindergarten, it was the first year that kindergarten was mandatory here in New Brunswick. And I couldn't speak a lick of French. We grew up in St. John. She moved to the little village where I grew up, Santa Beat and Kent, when I was four, for a job, to get a better job so we can have a better life. Because my mom, again, was a single mom. My biological father pieced out of our life pretty much when I was born. And he was still on TV. Every Sunday, people knew who he was. People still know who he is now. People still recognize me for that now. Whatever. Um, but it was really tough for my mom. We moved to this French-speaking village. I couldn't speak a lick of French. And we were kind of like ostracized. Nobody in the village really talked to us much because they thought we were like strangers, even though my grandma's from that area. But my mom didn't have that last name. Everybody knew my mom and Stephen Petipa's ex-wife. That was it. And it, it was rough. I mean, 
I had a hard time fitting in because again, I thought differently. I didn't play with toys the same way other four year olds did. So I needed to learn French to go to school. And there's a reason why she picked the French school. And that's because again, where I'm from, there's two schools. There was the French school that was in our community. And then there was the English speaking school that wasn't that far away. But the English speaking school was also where the Aboriginal kids went to school. Now, nothing against the Aboriginal people at all. Most of them are my friends. We get along great now. But as a four-year-old that already had authority issues and didn't play well with others, she didn't want to put me in a situation where I would have more chances of clashing with other people. So, one. That's step one of her wanting a better life for me. So she signed me up with this daycare that was great. I met my best friend Eve. We've been friends since we were four, simply because he could speak English. And that's how I learned French. As the story goes, I learned French in about six weeks. Okay, when you're a kid, you learn things fast when you're a kid. Went to kindergarten. Now, in kindergarten, I don't remember much, but again, I've been told the stories. I failed cutting and I failed coloring in kindergarten. Don't ask. But here is where door number one got shut in her face. Now, I actually remember part of this. So we came here to Moncton, which back then was a big deal. Like even now, the little village I'm from, which is just an hour's drive away, I'm 37. And when I go home, people are like, what's life in the big city? This isn't a big city, but the little village where I grew up in is very isolated. They haven't really evolved that that much with the times. Doesn't matter, great people, not the point. The point is, is that we came here to Moncton to, you know, the French hospital, because everything's divided by languages around here. But we went to the hospital and I remember doing a bunch of tests and it turns out that that was a test to see if I had ADHD. And the conclusion to all of that was that I did not have ADHD because I was too intelligent. Now, I actually remember part of that test. So they made me sit at a little desk and there was this big machine in front of me. Now that I know electrical engineering is very rudimentary, but you know, this is 1986, so. And there was a series of numbers that would just flip. And every time the number one would come on, I had to hit the button. Now, I'm four or five. I think this is a game, which is the point. The kid is supposed to think it's a game. They're not supposed to know. Now, was I paying attention? Hell no. Was the point of the exercise to see if I could pay attention? Hell yes. I wasn't paying attention, but I remember, and I still remember now, that I had realized if I swung my foot 41 times, the number one would appear. So I would just count my swinging foot to 41 and hit the number. So I had no delayed reaction to seeing the number one, because I was just counting how many times I swung my foot, not because I was paying attention to the machine. But did they look into that? No. Did they know about ADD, like they know now then? No. Back then, the consensus was, if you're intelligent, you can't have ADD. You can't have ADHD. So they basically told my mom, their kid's super, super smart, and she doesn't have ADD. And that's the story I grew up knowing. Now, a few years ago, family person, okay, she's my aunt. My aunt is the one who said it, because my mom would confide into my aunt. My aunt has now moved across the country here to be with family because they're retired. I'm super happy about that. She came home for one summer and, you know, things weren't going that well with my mom. So she decided to tell me the truth about that day. Also on that day, when my mom was told that I was too intelligent and I didn't have ADHD, which is the only thing she ever told me about, the psychologist that ran the test told her that if she got laid more often, her daughter would behave better. I'm not kidding. Back in 1986, a psychologist looked at my mom and told her that if she just whore herself out a little bit, got a little bit more action in the sack, her kid would act better. What the fuck? That's what I'm saying. I don't have kids, but I have someone very special to me since she was three days old, she was mine, not the point. She's my little cousin, love her to death. But I can't imagine how that must feel to have that door slammed in your face being, we can't help you. There's nothing wrong with your child. 
you're the problem, and you're the problem because you don't get laid enough. So that was slam in the face door number one. And just that, if my mom would have been like, well, they're not going to help me with anything. Maybe I'm the problem. Well, I can't do anything to help my kid. That would be a completely normal response to never try again. But she didn't. She didn't take that as an answer. She, in her mind, was like, y'all are wrong. My kid is different. And I'm not going to give up till she gets the help. So, one, again, thanks, mom. Like, seriously, thank you. Because had you decided to not try after that, again, I cannot fault you for that. Because what the fuck was that? And yes... Part of my childhood trauma, again, is just the fact that I had a hard time in school because she didn't get any diagnosis. Nobody wanted to help me. So here I go into school. After failing kindergarten, after failing cutting and coloring, whatever, probably couldn't see very well then to begin with, but not the point. I go into first grade. Now, first and second grade where I was from was taught by nuns, whatever. It was just a regular school. It's just that the teachers that were still there happened to be nuns. And they were teaching things in French. Well, I could read. I knew my alphabet. I knew my numbers. I wasn't very good at writing yet, I don't think. I don't know. But I know I could read. So, yeah, I acted out in class because I was bored. Don't try to teach me my ABCs. I fucking know my ABCs. So, almost every single day. Actually, every single day. Every single day of first grade, I got kicked out of class. Because I would act up. Now, it took the other kids a few months to realize, just a few months, to realize that if they picked on me a little bit, I would have a meltdown. So, after a while, it wasn't even me trying to act out, it was just other people picking on me. So, there's another huge trauma that hit to my borderline personality disorder that has nothing to do with my mother. The kids in school tortured me for years until I graduated high school. Because I was a smart kid. And I didn't fit in. And my mom still kept trying to get me help, to get me to fit in. And this is where I feel that my story of what I went through with school, because now I'm old enough to remember what happened in school. I know most of the issues, you know, behind the scenes too. Because some of those issues are still happening today. And I graduated high school 20 years ago. And it needs to stop. Because... Teen suicide is becoming more often, and it's becoming younger, and I just want people to know that you can get out of it, and I want people to know that there's other people that struggle as well, and that if you're a parent and you're getting door slammed in your face, you're not the only one that's getting door slammed in your face. So now we're going to talk about school, and it's mostly from like my perspective and how I went through things and then I guess I'll tell you like how my mom and then eventually my stepdad stepped in and tried to help. <sighs> All right sorry for you it's a few seconds for me it's been a few minutes I need a break I need to think about stuff because this is hard and this is emotional but school wasn't that fun no I got picked on every single day to the point that the older kids would just look at me and be like, are you going to cry today? And just that would make me cry because I didn't understand why they were picking on me. And like I could see all the other kids not getting picked on. And everybody would pick on me. And it was hard and I didn't understand. And you can try to tell a six or seven year old, you know, bullies or bullies or whatever. It doesn't change anything. And I'm bringing this back to everyday stuff today, like 2020, where they have all these teacher's aides. And one of my best friends is a teacher's aide, so I mean, they are miracle workers. But now they're trying to put everybody in the same classroom and trying to make everybody fit in with each other. But there's all these things called safe spaces. No. No, this shit needs to stop. From someone who went through it, from someone who went through school without safe spaces, those things 
hurt more than anything else because they end up going through school being a little bit different, being a little bit weird, but nobody can ever say anything to them. So they don't know how to react, how to act. They have no outer skin to negativity. And when they graduate and they go in the real world, because I mean, a lot of high functioning autistic people work. A lot of people that have like teacher's aides don't necessarily have any kind of mental deficiency. They can still get jobs and still do a lot of things. But they go out in the world as an adult and that safe space is gone. And they have no capability to know how to handle negativity and people saying shit at them. Now, I'm not saying that we need to put them out there and they need to go through all the shit that I did where people yell at them. I don't know where the balance in the middle is. But maybe that's a discussion that all of you can have out there. I'm just saying, in my case, in a really weird twist of things, I'm actually kind of glad that it happened because it shaped me into who I am as an adult today. Yes, it was a trauma that gave me the personality disorder that I have, but I mean, things could have been worse. So I went through school and the teachers hated me because I didn't listen. But why the fuck would I listen? They're teaching me shit I already know. And I went to my teacher one day and, you know, like, the teacher called me off to the side one day, you know, trying to tell me, like, you're not paying attention, whatever. And I'm like, yo, woman, I can read. And she's like, no, you can't. So she opens up the Bible, a French Bible. I'm like, I can't read this. This is French. And they're like, okay, whatever. So the next day I come in, I had one of my books. I think it was a golden book. Do you guys remember what golden books are? And I read the book. And they're like, yeah, right. You just know this book by heart. And I was getting frustrated. Because... I'm telling them the truth and they're calling me a liar to my face. And even though I'm five, I ain't stupid. Which most five-year-olds aren't stupid, by the way. But. So they bring out something else that was English. I don't know what it was. And I read it. And then they're all kind of like sitting there. Because there was the principal there and there was somebody else and whatever. And they're discussing like I'm not in the room. What the fuck they're going to do with me? Because I can read. So... That was like the first couple years of school. It was just me being frustrated and getting frustrated that other kids didn't know the same thing that I did. But like even to this day, my tolerance for stupidity is like zero. But that's also part of my personality disorder and it's something that I've been working on for a few years now and I'm getting a lot better at just like ignoring stuff, whatever. Is somebody giving a bad information over there? I think about it. Is it worth it? Is it worth correcting them? Is it worth the fight? All that whatnot. Now I know that skill. But as a six-year-old and a seven-year-old, did I know that? No. I was so pissed off. I'm like, dude, two plus two is four. How the fuck is this? Like, how could... I would get so angry. Like, people couldn't figure out that two plus two was four. I'm like, dude, that's so fucking duh. How can you not know this? Not everybody knows everything. Not everybody's on the same level. I didn't understand that. And nobody understood why I didn't understand that. So nobody could help me kind of figure it out. So I was kind of lost. And then third grade hit. Now third grade hit, and I only learned this years and years later. They actually went to my mom and said, look, third grade is the year that we implement English. So in New Brunswick, the English system, if you want to learn to speak French, you gotta go through French immersion which is a whole different thing. You have to sign your kid up for it right now. They're changing it. I don't know, but you have to sign your kid up for French immersion. If you're in the French school system, you automatically learn English. You have English classes and they start in third grade. So, I mean, I could do math. I could do math beyond what they were teaching. I could read in French. I could read in English. So they were like, well, let's just skip this grade because maybe she won't be so bored when she's having classes that, you know, she doesn't know everything. And this is another thing that I want to thank my mom for. She said no. She said no. You can't put my kid, who already doesn't fit in, and already gets bullied by the older kids, up with the older kids. Because they're just going to hate her even more. And she's right on that. that that's fucking true. Um, on that same subject, they also wanted me to skip fifth grade, which she said no again. So thank you again. Because I was already not fitting in. And you put that someone that doesn't fit in amongst people that already don't like them, it would have made things 10 times worse. So that's another door 
that she just refused to let slam in her face. So, thanks, Mom. But, I remember when they were trying to teach people English. Oh, dear Lord. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That was rough. So, again, I grew up in a very French-speaking village, which is kind of weird. Like, it's a really weird thing, because, like I say, they're isolated. So, like, my little village where I grew up, people barely could understand English, let alone speak it when I was a kid. So, like, 25 years ago. If you drive 15 minutes north, you hit another little village where they can't speak a lick of French. They all speak English. And then there's little communities, and they all go back and forth between French and English. Um, my best friend since sixth grade, the village that she lived in, nobody there spoke a lick of French, really. And, you know, her mom had remarried again, and her stepdad and her older siblings couldn't speak a, a lick of French either. So, yeah, it, it's just a really weird thing. But as someone who could speak English, who knows English, trying to learn that in the French system is fucked up. I've lost count of how many times I got kicked out of class for correcting my teachers. I got suspended. So I'm going to tell this story and I'm kind of jump some years while I tell it. Because third grade, I don't even remember. I got kicked out so many times. So I'm telling the teacher, yo, that's not how we say this word. You're saying it wrong. And the teacher's like, I'm the teacher. I should know. And I'm like, I speak English. I should know. So yeah, I was also like a really bratty, smart ass little kid. But the one that I really remember was sixth grade. I got suspended for two days for correcting my teacher that it wasn't pronounced Daguar. <laughs> they just couldn't pronounce Daguar right. They had the emphasis in the wrong places and it made no sense. And of course, smart ass me was like, yo, you're wrong. So I got suspended in there. Staying on the subject of English class in a French school, fast forward this to high school. 12th grade, senior year. I spent half that senior year not in school because of depression and shit. We'll get there later. But I needed to take advanced English, okay? This is an advanced English class in order to go to university because I had all my credits to graduate by 11th grade. I just did my senior year to graduate the year 2000, to graduate with my friends, and I needed extra credits, you know, certain classes in order to qualify for university. So I wasn't there that much in class. Again, I spent a lot of time not there. But we read Animal Farm out loud. Do you know how fucking frustrating? This is advanced English class, okay? With a bunch of French speaking people who don't have access that much to like English TV. So they're not used to hearing it. Because a lot of our high school English classes were just us watching movies. Mostly Degrassi Junior High. Because, you know, there's no, I don't know why, we just watched Degrassi Junior High all the time. It was weird. So that people could actually hear English. Because if you don't know what something's supposed to sound right, you don't know you're saying it wrong. But this is supposed to be the advanced class. This is how people would read. The mother ran up the tree to get the cat. Like, what? Like, people, it, it would take so long. Like, not only was the pronunciation fucked up. They could barely read anything. Well, it's Animal Farm. There's a colonel guy. He's in charge. Now this teacher had been a teacher at that school for a very long time. As in, he taught school when my stepdad was in school. He'd been there for like 30 years. And one day I'm like, yo man, it's pronounced colonel, not colonel. Because I mean, it's spelled that way, right? And the look on his face. Now he was like a frail old man that had like two wool sweaters that was cold. And he got mad and he's like, who the fuck do you think you are? And I'm like, but you're wrong. It's pronounced colonel, not colonel. And then he kicked me out of class. First, like he brought me to like the, the hallway and talked to me and he's like, look, I don't know what you think you know, but I've been teaching English for like 30 years. So stop being disruptive. And again, me being a smart ass. Well, maybe you should fucking know what you're talking about. You know, got kicked out of class for all that as well. And then another frustrating thing about advanced English class is we had to write a paper or an essay on satire because Animal Farm is a satirical thing. I didn't write about Animal Farm. Everybody else probably did. I wrote about the movie Clueless. 
because the movie Clueless had come out a year or two before and it's one of my favorite movies. I wrote about it, I got my paper back, I got a zero. Because he told me that what I was referring to wasn't satirical. So I went to the principal because by that time, the principal, we got along great. Um, he looked at this, he agreed. I mean, long story short, he has a teenage daughter as well. He was somewhat familiar with the movie, looked it up, told my teacher that I was actually correct. That was that. And then when it came time to the exam, again, I missed most of the semester. Go right to the exam and my teacher was like, you can't write this exam. I'm like, well, why not? He's like, you've barely been to class. I was like, yeah, but I did all my homework. It's a 500 word essay on aliens. Seriously, I think I can handle this. And he's like, oh no, you don't know enough. Dude. Anyway, I got 100% in that class. But that's just how frustrating life is. And I mean, that was my frustrations. That wasn't anything that my mom could really help with because she also knew that I could pronounce things in English very well and I read in English very well. Anyway, but that was English. For the rest of school, math. Math. Beautiful math. Right now they got this weird kind of fucking math going. I don't get it. But math is something I understood very easily. And I would get frustrated because nobody else would understand. And I'm like, how hard is it to know that like, you know, because by then we're probably in multiplications and divisions and stuff like that. And they would have like flashcards, so they would, in, in order to kind of like teach us to make sure we did our homework, we would have like two lines and it was like a battle on the flashcard, the first person to say the right answer or whatever. And it was always me and like another person who we, we were friends and then we were frenemies and now as adults we're friends again. I'm not going to mention the name though, but it was always, you know, me and her because she also was highly intelligent, but both her parents were teachers. So... You know, not saying that I was smarter than her, like, whatnot. That's just not my point. My point is it was always, like, her and I at the end of, of everything. So we always had, like, a little competition thing going. But I would get so frustrated in line when people couldn't figure out, like, simple division. I'm like, how, how, what? And, oh, even now, I still kind of get frustrated on some things. And I have a learning disability with math, by the way, which we didn't even know. I went through, you know, I went through grade school and then I went through junior high understanding everything because junior high is when they put in algebra. Well, algebra in the beginning was just like X and we actually had like a little cube and then we had like a little cube 10 in a row. I mean, like another one that had, I had mean, another one that had like a hundred cubes in it so that we could visually see what we were talking about. That shit I completely understood and I did have some good teachers. My eighth grade teacher because that was the year that they started introducing algebra and X's and all that kind of whatnot. She was a great teacher. She realized that I completely understood this. So all she did was give me extra work, extra homework, extra stuff for extra points. But those points were just like me, because I always do this, even like work. I gotta go to work later. Um, I have an internal competition with myself. Like I'm gonna beat the best that I got yesterday. Always trying to be the best that I can be. So those extra points didn't really go towards anything. But it gave me something to do, and it gave me stickers. And I liked stickers even though I was like 14, doesn't matter. But then we get to high school, and then I just had such a hard time with math. And the teachers didn't know how to help me, because I mean, I would, I would fail a lot of things and barely pass math. But they would keep me after class to try to understand, you know, like, why am I having a hard time with math when my other classes, I, I have like, you know, one of the highest averages. But I could explain math. And I took, I also took like advanced physics class and I confused the entire class because I was trying to explain something because that's how I understood the problem to be. And it was like at a quantum level and the teacher's like, you know what, just stop. We'll talk about this after. And then class was done and he came over, talked to me and he's like, what you're explaining, like what you're understanding is shit that I learned in university, like what? So nobody can understand why I could explain math. I could get the correct answer. I just didn't get it the right way. I didn't follow the steps they told me to do. So I ultimately ended up passing all my math classes because I could find the right answer. But I mean, I would pass with like a passing grade and that was it because I never had the right way of getting there. Now for everybody that's struggling with that part too, it gets better. 
go to college. College doesn't care how you get to the answer as long as your logic makes sense and your teacher can follow your logic and you get to the right answer. Nobody fucking cares. So if you're struggling with that in school, here's a thumbs up. It's going to get better when you go to college. But even though I had some great teachers, I had some bad ones too. So we're going to go back a little bit in time, back to when junior high started, which was sixth grade here. And where I'm from, we switched schools. Like I did grade one and two and this old school, and then I did three, four, and five, and this even older school that used to be a college at one point in time. And then they built a new school in another town or city, whatever they're called, like a little bit away. So it was like a 20 minute bus ride to go to school. And then other villages came together. So that's how I met like my best friends, first day of sixth grade. Um, so there's just more people combined together and that was another place. So six, seven, eight was at another school with a different principal. With a different principal, different teachers. So my sixth grade teacher, I had no idea she hated me this much. I didn't know until my mom finally told me later on. So again, my mom and my stepdad only got married. I mean, I think I was in high school or just graduated high school or something like that. They were together for a very, very long time before they got married. The reasons why don't matter. I don't even think there is one. They just didn't see the point. So, so my mom still had my biological dad's last name. But my stepdad came into my life when I was about seven or eight years old. And that man saved my life. I'm so eternally grateful that he chose to be my father. He chose to love me. He chose to do things for me. And he chose to fight along with my mom. Because it would have been even worse had he not been there. So again, sixth grade, things were going very well. My mom went to see the teacher. And that teacher, she looked at my mother and she said, I don't like your kid. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure your kid fails. Because your kid is stupid. She's never going to accomplish anything in her life. And if I were you, I would give up on her. That's what the teacher told my mom. So again, if she would have given up on me, because that's another door slammed in your face, the fucking teachers are like, I hate your kid and I'm going to do everything I can. Your kid's never going to amount to anything. I mean, it takes a lot on the inside to be able to tell professionals you're wrong, my kid isn't stupid. Like, it takes a lot. I mean, you get told that to your face. A lot of people trust teachers or don't. I mean, I don't know. But the teacher told her that to her face. So she made an appointment to see the principal to talk about it. And that's when my stepdad decided that he was going to step up to the plate and, and help with that stuff, which was great. Because he's from there. And everybody knew who he was. Everybody knows my stepdad's name. And that actually... And that principal and him had a history because he was a principal back when my stepdad was to school. So things changed a little bit when my stepdad came into the picture, but not necessarily for the best. It didn't change for the best. So, I mean, if you need to refill that coffee or roll up another one, like, the frustrations are even getting worse now. It didn't change for the best. Because until then, so the first five and a half years of me going to school when she would talk to like the school psychologists and the teachers they blamed everything on her being a single mom like everything was her fault no i mean i'm sure it wasn't easy to be a single mom and now as an adult i actually see all the sacrifices she made like i loved milk i still do to this day that's what i drank that triggered my esophagus to swell up really crazy and, and everything gets stuck and it moved into a very bad part of my chest they had to go the scope get it whatever um it's part of the autoimmune it's one of my triggers i can't have real milk anymore i do usually drink almond milk but not the point as a kid i loved milk and yes we had bad milk but i didn't know that powder milk existed till i was like 20. Milk's fucking expensive, people. Mom didn't make that much money. I mean, the finances got a little bit better when my stepdad moved in. But even at that, I mean, we weren't rich yet. We, life got better and whatnot later on. But I grew up poor as fuck and didn't even know it. I had no idea. We had cable. That was a sacrifice. And my mom did. She made sure we had cable. And that was a huge deal. Like, where I was from, like, nobody had cable, nobody had that kind of money, nobody had that thing. Everybody had the antenna with the three channels. But we had cable. And she made sure we had cable because 
even at the age of like six, I loved watching documentaries. We had PBS. She wanted me to be able to watch things to learn. I didn't have that many toys. The only toys I really had were things that my biological father would buy me like at Christmas and birthday and all that kind of stuff. She spent her money on books. I had this huge collections of books by time. Like the magazine Time, they made these books for kids that would explain things. One of them would be all about volcanoes. Another one would be all about like electricity. One of them was all about like trees. They all had things. I had this huge collection. And I'm certain those cost a lot of money. But I loved those books. I would read them and I would read them over and over again. Because it was learning things and it was teaching me things that I wasn't necessarily learning in school. Or that I would just learn quickly in school. Like, you know, you may learn quickly in school that trees produce oxygen. But this book would really go into explain like photosynthesis and, and like why the leaves change color in the fall and how that happens and all those things. So I was like eight or nine and I knew all that shit, you know. Probably didn't help again in school that I knew all that shit already. But she spent her money on things for me. And she didn't get a lot of things. So this is something I say a lot. And I'm going to say it public. And hopefully she hears this part. I'm aware of the sacrifices that she made. Does it make some of the things that happened between us later on in life okay? No. But does it make me understand that what happened later on in life came from a place of love? Yes. Now I get it. You know, it doesn't make him better. But, you know. They still happened, but they were in the past. It happened then, we're just gonna move on. Because we can't change it. All we can do is grow and learn and all that kind of whatnot. Whew, okay. I need another moment. Sorry. So things didn't necessarily get better. Now that they knew that she wasn't a single mom anymore, they just changed the focus. Never on what was actually going on with me. Like, nobody ever wanted or tried or could realize that I was just different. They had to blame my behavior and, and me, whatever, on other stuff. And then around, I don't know, seventh, eighth grade, they decided that the reason why I was weird and didn't fit in was because my biological father wasn't always in the picture. Now, at the time was like my dad's like peak or his second peak, I guess, because he was super huge, popular, wrestled around the world, went to Japan, went to Germany for some years, was around here while I was a kid, until I was like four or five, I guess. And then like in high school was like the second peak that was about the time that he actually acquired and bought Grand Prix Wrestling and did all that stuff. So he traveled a lot. That was his job. He went to different places. I mean, he even wrestled for many, many years in Montreal with La Lutte Internationale. If you know anything about that one, he was Sheik Ali at the time. So... Yeah, he did all that stuff, and even now, again, for myself as an adult, he also made sacrifices for his kids. I mean, there's more out there that I've never met, but not the point, okay? People make mistakes in life, whatever. Um, he was offered a chance with the WWE. He turned it down. He doesn't, for whatever reason it is, he didn't want to leave his family, didn't want to leave home for whatever. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the, I don't know the whole story behind it, but I do know that he... Turned it down. Like, it was turned down behind his back for him. But he has enough connections. He knows enough people that if he really would have wanted it, he just could have picked up a phone and got it done. Um, I also have a picture. I found this picture the other day. Um, you can see it. He also played hockey. Yeah, he also played hockey. He actually could have gone pro. He could have been an NHL hockey player if he wanted to as well. My dad, as in my biological father, decided he didn't want to. He just wanted to live his quiet little life. But to the people who were at the school, the psychologists and the people who were there, they didn't know him personally. They just knew him as some guy that was on TV and some guy that was on posters and some guy that went around the world and, you know, beat up people for a living. And they decided that it was his fault and ultimately stopped me from seeing him. To the point that, and... I don't, my father, my father will never watch this, but my stepmom might. The reason I stopped going to see my biological father so much is because the school threatened my mother. 
to not let me go to school anymore if I went to see my biological father. Yeah. Thanks a lot, school. That was, that was so nice of you. Instead of trying to talk to me and, and figure out, because you're a freaking psychiatrist, psychologist, what the fuck you are, um, stopped me from seeing my biological father. So we no longer have a relationship. We never really... It just kept deteriorating over the years. And again, I'm super thankful that my stepdad was there to, to be a dad for me. But my biological father wasn't the problem. That wasn't it at all. I'm just high-functioning autistic and smart. And I didn't fit in with people because I have an attitude. Did my attitude come from... Well, my attitude came from me just being picked on and me being not listened to. I had a smart mouth and I would call people out and I still call people out on stuff now. I'm a little more careful on how I do it. Do I still fuck up? Sure, everybody does. I'm not perfect, I know that. But I didn't have a lot of the knowledge that I have now and restraint and whatever, so I would just, I mean, spade's a spade and I would fucking tell you that it's what. But they stopped me from seeing my father. And I don't think I've ever actually said this publicly before. It's just kind of hit me now. That wasn't the, like, again, another door slammed in the face. They basically told my mom that she was a horrible parent. There was nothing wrong with me. That her choice of her first husband was the issue. Like, no. Again, if you're a parent out there and you're getting told these things, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. All I can do again is open a discussion. If you want to talk about in the comments, please do. If you want to give it a thumbs up to support of the parents, or even to tell my mom that she tried so fucking hard and thank her for it, go for it. So things didn't really get much better. That, that was school. I didn't fit in. My mom kept trying to tell them that I wasn't necessarily the problem. And now, I mean, it's 2020. People are more aware of things, but my mom has been saying this certain saying for about as long as I can remember. That trying to fit a square peg in a round hole isn't going to work. Yes. And that whole other, I think it's a meme, but it's an actual thing. It might be a meme now, but I think it was part of an actual, like, article, like, in the early 90s. It, it's a real thing that standardized tests don't work for people that don't have a standardized mind. And you don't have to be on the spectrum to, to not have a standardized mind. We should all be different. We should all celebrate our differences. I mean, I'm, I'm on the fucking weird scale as fuck, but whatever. That's not, not the point. I mean, I, I do personally think that right now the whole, like, let people be who they want sometimes get taken a little too far because some people, you know, don't. Because there's some people that are growing up now with no sense of others and no sense of, like, they've never been held accountable for anything, so they have no responsibility. And, I mean, there's one thing about being yourself and being weird, but then there's another part of being yourself and being weird inappropriately. And, I mean, I, I'm not going to name names. I mean, there's people that I was friends with before. We don't necessarily speak all that much, but when they're in public... You know, it's okay to be weird. There's just some certain subjects and there's some certain things that you just don't say and do in public. And with that whole, again, like, you know, everybody's included and they grow up in the safe spaces, they become adults that don't know how to act in public. So those people piss me off even more. And me being pissed off by stupid people and dumbass shit and people that don't know anything is part of my personality disorder. So, I mean, I'm a bitch on some things. Technically, it's not my fault. But that's not an excuse. It's not an excuse at all, just, just in general, for everybody else that's out there too. You might be high-functioning autistic, you might be Asperger's, you might have really bad ADHD. It's not a fucking excuse for anything. And I guess that's where I'm gonna end this. Because I hear so many people go, I have ADHD, it's not my fault that I can't pay my bills on time, it's not my fault that I can't do this. Look people, my ADHD is so bad that it is one of the three main reasons that I have federal fucking disability. If my ADHD is that bad, that they'll sign my fucking federal disability papers, meaning I can't work full time because I have ADHD, and I pay my fucking bills on time, I've never had a problem, that's not an excuse. 
and I hate hearing it, and if I hear anybody else out there, I will call them out on it. That's not a fucking excuse. And there's another one, because this is someone who's somewhat a friend of mine. Being an asshole doesn't equal having Asperger's. Those are two different things. You can be half-functioning autistic, you can have Asperger's. That's one thing. Being an asshole is a completely different thing, and you can't blame it on having some kind of anything. If you purposely go out of your way to ruin someone else's day just because, you know, you don't like that person, you want to have revenge, that's not an autistic thing, by the way. That's just being a fucking asshole. Like, don't confuse the two. And as a society, I personally think that we need to start holding those people accountable. You, I think we want to, though. I think as a society, we want to. There's just this whole thing where, like, Everybody's a fucking snowflake and everybody's offended and nobody knows where to do or do anything. So, no, the system is still broken and it's still not helping anybody. Hopefully there's no moms out there or single dads because they're a thing that get told that they need to get laid more in order for their child to act better. I still can't get over that. That's fucked up. And there's probably more little stories here and there but that would take you even longer, but that's like the gist of it. As a parent, she was told her, well, even not to this day, but I mean, for a good 20 years of my life, that she was a problem. There was nothing wrong with me. That her life choices, who she decided to marry, what she decided to do for a living, what language she spoke, was the reason why I wasn't fitting in. When the whole time I wasn't fitting in, because my brain is structured differently than everybody else's. Because I think in a different way, I think in a different manner. And for some weird reason, they, I mean, I don't know what the answer to all of this is. I just know that some of these problems are still happening today. I'm sharing my story for everybody else who is either a student, someone that's going through this, who's being bullied and picked on, I'm really sorry to say that bullying doesn't stop. I'm gonna be fucking honest. Bullying just changes. You leave school, you go into the world of, of working. And at work, there's always groups of friends and there's the popular group and then there's a not popular group. And then there's always people that are gonna leave other people out. And then there's always someone that's gonna suck up to the manager and get everything without having to fucking work a day. And you're the one working, like, it never really ends. It just changes into something different. But you can learn how to adapt to that. Because if I can learn, anybody can. It's not easy. It takes time. But this is the one part where the internet is actually good. There's a lot of self-help things out there. There's a lot of things that or necessarily good advice, but I'm not getting in to find out if it's good advice or not. Like, whatever it is that you do to keep your cool, to make sense of things, do that. Fuck the rest. Because, like, in my life, it's still that way now. For me to accomplish a task, just it can be an everyday task, I usually have about 17 different steps when everybody else can do it in five. So... Everybody's A to B is pretty much a straight line and mine kind of looks like, you know, a tumbleweed. It doesn't matter. I still get to the end. It doesn't fucking matter how you get there. As long as you do. And don't let other people tell you that you're, you know, getting the middle part wrong. If you're not, you know, breaking the law, you're not hurting anybody, you know, no one's getting hurt or whatever. If it takes you longer to get to the end, who fucking cares? Just do it. And people need to, like, let people do things their own way. That's true. Life doesn't really get any easier. It just changes. The obstacles kind of become different things, but they're always kind of the same. I know this might sound like a bleak kind of a thing, but I have a good life. There, there's a lot of things that I long and would love to have certain things in my life. I'd love to have more friends. You know, maybe find someone to settle down with. That ain't seem to be happening. You know what? Oh, well. It could be worse. I could have nothing. I could be on the freaking street. I do have a part-time job. It was hard to find. 
to have a part-time job that works within what I can do with my limitations. Things could be a lot worse. And I like to think of all the good things that I have. And I mean, sometimes I get down, perfectly normal. But if I think back all the things that I went through, all the things that my mom went through, all the things they told her, holy fuck, that was insane. That should not happen. And I hope to God it's not happening to people today. Which again, talk about it if it is. The only way we're ever going to fix anything is for people to talk about it. So this was my story. I hope it made sense. I know I jump around a lot. But I have ADD, man. I'm trying my best and I was completely unscripted. So if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear more of things that I've gone through and lived. Because a hell of a lot more. The whole bullying thing is a whole different different thing. If you want to hear about that, I'll tell it. Just let me know. But I mean, I hope that this is helping someone. I hope I just didn't spill all of this for no reason. I can't change the world. I'm never going to. I just, again, hope that it just opens up conversations that maybe you're a teenager and you, you want to talk to your parents. Make them watch this. I don't know. Maybe you're a parent. You don't want to talk to your teenager. You know, ask. That's what the Facebook page is for. That's what the messenger part is for. Um, yes, I go through mental health, I, I still get help, but I'm still technically a peer support counselor because I've been through more shit than this. So I'm not a professional, I don't necessarily give answers, but I can put into the right direction and also find you proper things to read to help understand things. So if you want that, go to the Facebook page, it's linked below, go to the messenger, ask questions, or, or ask below, doesn't matter. So. With all of that, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to get ready for work. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of the year, great rest of the week. And I'll see you guys later.